All right, welcome to class. We, we are here for the lecture once again, the first chapter of the course, Computer Hardware Maintenance and Repair. So this is a course that teaches you more about the computer components, hardware, software, how to assemble, disassemble, how to maintain a computer system, how to repair a computer system. Now, this is the class, they are all here. Now, okay, that's the HOC waving hands there. That's the HOC, that's the class representative. The chapter is about computer hardware components. So the objective, as you can see in that note, is to learn about the hardware components. Are you there? Yes, yes sir. Learn that a computer requires both hardware and software. software. Requires both hardware and software to make it work. And then the many different hardware components is what we are going to learn in chapter one. There are very plenty of components to learn about, and then we want to go little by little. So you follow along with the notes. Yes, sir. We have the same notes, we have the same page. First of all, we know the computer system is an electrical device. Is that also? Yes, sir. For that reason, we need to learn about safety. So briefly, we are going to remind you about safety. You are an electrical engineering student, and you know that safety is quite important in your course of study and in your career. Is that not so? Yes, sir. Yes. So we, the first thing we are going to talk about is the safety aspect of handling the computer. Safety aspect of handling the computer. Now, electrical devices in the computer system require electric power. Is that also? Yes, sir. So, so there are adapters manufactured to be connected to take power from the socket, from the wall socket to the system. Then you have to bear in mind also, in order not to spoil the system, destroy components with electric force, you need to use appropriate adapter for each, each system. system. Uh, that is what we made here. AC adapters are manufactured for specific laptops. Mm -hmm. You cannot go and carry that of uh, uh, Dell and say you want to use it with HP. You will notice that even, even HP has different types. When you see the mouse, you see that the mouse cannot enter ordinarily uh, anyhow, uh, laptop. Even if all of, the, all of them are HP, is that also? Yes. Why do they make the mouse to be different, different, different like that? So that you don't mistakenly use the wrong one with your system and spoil your computer. That's why they created those different, different mouse. Like for for instance, now uh, this is normal USB, USB maybe uh, USB two or so. This is Type C, yes. all right. Ordinarily, you cannot plug in charger of Type C into this one and things like that. The other part is electrostatic discharge. There is the uh, uh, problem of electrostatic discharge, the static electricity that builds up on surfaces, and it can build up on our body as well. If you take notes during Amatan period, at night when you try to remove your clothes, you see some sparks. How many people have experienced that? You see some sparks packing like that during Amatan period. That is as a result of electrostatic discharge. So this thing builds up on our body and we will be ignorant of it. We will not know that it's there. But there are some sensitive component, computer components that when you touch it, that discharge can affect them. What is that discharge actually? It's actually voltage, but static voltage, not the dynamic one that we use here with our system. It's static. It can stay on surface. And 30 volts of that ESD can spoil components. Only 30 volts. But human body cannot feel that that static electricity. Before you can feel it, the voltage will build up up to 3,000 volts. That is not something you can even think of. So even the small one, even if it's only 50 volts on your body, I do not know. If you use it to touch a computer component, you can spoil computer components. So that's what we are saying. We want to be careful. When you want to handle a computer system, make sure you discharge your body. Sometimes some, some people will tell you you hold better parts of the computer. Justice. Chassis to discharge it, but normally what is made for that purpose is what we call anti-static wrist strap. You connect that into your wrist and then connect it somewhere on the, on the workbench, so it will discharge anything that is up on your body. Or use anti-static mat. That mat will be spread on the table before you now bring the computer case into it and begin to remove component and put it in there. It will be discharging any uh, ESD, any electrostatic discharge. So that they won't spoil computer components. You can spoil sensitive components such as RAM, uh, other memory modules, CPU, by touching it only when you have ESD on your body. So we have to be careful about that. Alright. Okay. You know, enter. Because they have designed this 
uh, uh, in a way that the power inside each is not the same. So they don't want you to just be using wrong you know, devices with the wrong charger. Wrong charger will work with your devices, in order not to spoil. So computer has that one. So safety for the computer components, number one. Safety for yourself. The person handling the computer is also important. So we want to be, uh, bear in mind that uh, safety first. Electrical safety, safety first. Safety Don't wear jewelry and things like that when you are handling computer. Then when you have heavy load, there is a process by which you can carry a load. You just just bend down your your, your, your your back like that. You can injure you when the load is very heavy. So the instruction or the right procedure mm -hmm. you have to follow is to bend down your knee and lift the load. When you do that, the weight of the load will not go to your back, it goes to your thighs. Are you there? Yes, sir. So that one too is important because when you deal with computer, sometimes you, you need to lift some loads and things like that. The other part is electric. Now, let's now go straight to the computer components. Now, all of us, we are not new in computer field. You have seen components, several components, hardware of the computer. But we want to go into the detailed information about them now. Now, example of computer components include monitor, keyboard, memory, hard drive, and so on and so forth. And this hardware usually they require electric power. I've mentioned it. Yes, sir. Yes, they require electric power. Now we want to talk about input output devices. I.O. devices. What are I.O. devices? Basically, they are devices that you use with the computer but they are connected externally to the computer. They are not inside. Are you there? Yes, sir. So I.O. devices are external, externally connected to the computer. And they are the devices that uh, communicate with computer components. The user will use them to communicate with the computer components. Them, usually all of them are connected through cables. Sometimes we connect them wirelessly. Is that also? Yes, sir. Yes. So, and then the ones that are connected through cables usually have access points that we call ports. Ports. We have various types of ports on the computer system, including USB ports, serial ports, parallel ports, Centronics, uh, video game ports, and so on and so forth. You know, all of them are the back of the computers, so they are usually there. Now, let's look at some recent. I.O. devices that are now recent. Now, normally, when you talk about input-output devices, you talk about keyboard, mouse, monitor, a projector. You know, projector is an output device to the computer system. Yes. Just like monitor is an output device. All right? There, there is stylus. There is stylus. There is... Um, nowadays, there is... Touch screen. Touch screen is now an uh, input device. You know, instead of using your keyboard, you can now type from the screen. It's, an, it's now an input device. We also have magnetic strip, strip reader. Magnetic strip reader, those uh, devices that they use to read some line on the, on the products. Then we have a barcode scanner. Barcode scanner is also similar to magnetic strip reader. We have digital camera. Digital camera can also be linked with the computer and serve as input device to the computer. Just as webcam on the, on the, on the computer itself is an input device. That is a video input device. We have a signature pad. We have smart card reader. We have microphone. You know microphone is, a, is an input device. Yes. We have microphone. We have NFC devices. That is near field communication devices. We have facial recognition scanners. They are also input devices. Those are modern uh, input devices. We have fingerprint scanners. We have voice recognition scanners. We have virtual reality headsets. How many of you have used uh, this virtual reality of a team before? I've not done it before. It's, it's a kind of special case. You see, the thing will be as if you are there. You are there inside the. 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 Inside the.
<laughs> All those uh, special advanced games, they are advanced computer games. I will play right. some now. Now let's look at Apple devices. Apple devices. Uh, virtual reality is a, it's an Apple device. Apart from uh, loudspeaker, loudspeaker, monitor, printer, printer, projector. Now the traditional Apple device they were uh, uh, a monitor, monitor, speaker, speaker. And the projector, projector. Then, 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 then the, the, the printer. Yes, sir. Printer is an output device. Yes, but nowadays, output device has increased in number because of the advancement in technology. We have augmented reality, we have virtual reality. Yes. They are all the uh, output devices. Now, uh, output device take binary information from the computer and convert it to a form that is easily understand, understood by the user. Yes, you know, what the computer does inside is based on the binary, you know, work. <laughs> zero but hours. we cannot understand that one if it brings it out. Now, this zero and one you just mentioned, mm -hmm. I want to tell you today that computer does not do, deal with zero and one. Ah. It doesn't deal with zero and one. Yes. Because you are an electronic engineer, I will, t I will teach you today what computer, computer actually does. It's not dealing with zero and one. Oh, but to understand the way it works, okay. it is represented as zero and one. But you as an electronic engineer, electrical engineer, you must know what is actually happening in the computer. Computer does not deal with numbers, figures, no. It does something else inside. And we're going to get there very soon. Now let's look at uh, uh, some of the ports used with uh, uh, I.O. devices. We have uh, USB. USB is one important part. And then the speed of USB it's, a, it's faster than Syria and parallel connectors. Now that is why it's becoming the only, only port now that computer carries. Because they have uh, uh, adapted USB to every other device. You can call it through USB. Because USB is very fast. It's faster than Syria uh, ports. It's, it's faster than parallel ports. Then we have plug and play. I mean, sorry, USB is plug and play. Just bring the device. Take it in, then the computer will scan through it and then install driver for it, bam, instantly, it started working. It's plug and play. Alright? So when you look at the, the, the graphic I pasted here, you see some of these I.O. ports and their symbols at the back of the computer. What you use to represent them? You see, you see USB up there. That's the, the logo for USB. That's the design. We have PS2 keyboard and mouse. That is the old keyboard and mouse yes. that have color pink and pink, green. Pink and green. We don't normally use that one. Everything has become USB. Everybody does the uh, PS2 again. Yes. All right. Then LPT. So okay. printer is represented as once you see this uh, symbol at the back, you know that is printer port. In those days, printer port is the 25 pin parallel port. But nowadays, printer 2 has become USB. Nobody is using normal printer ports again. It's USB. Everything has become USB. Uh, that's why they call it U. What is the meaning of that U? Universal. 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 That's the point. Yeah. Every component can come into it. Universal serial. But it's actually serial connection. But they advance it so that it's even work faster, working faster than the normal serial ports. So that's why they made it universal for every component. Every component can come into the computer through that uh, connection. All right, now let's look at uh, the processing. Processing. Inside the computer, the computer system does processing of every work you give to it. And what's the main component that does this processing is the central processing yes. unit. Central processing unit, we call it uh, a CPU or sometimes a microprocessor or processor. Microprocessor or processor. Now it's takes in input, gets information from the input, process the data, and then writes the data to the storage. storage. Alright? Yes, sir. Now that is the main function of the processor. Alright. Then elements uh, required by IO devices. IO devices they they communicate with the computer system. Uh, they, 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 they are required. I.O. devices are required for the CPU to receive the uh, input information. 
that is going to process. You get that? Whatever you want computer to do, it will start from you, the user from the I.O. devices, such as mouse or keyboard or whatever, then bring it into the computer. Computer takes it into the CPU for processing. Alright? Then software. It's what is what is to guide the hardware, to instruct the hardware on what to do. Are you there? Yes, and that is uh, the way to control what the computer is doing. The software is needed. Alright? Then electricity is needed to power all the device. Look at these graphics that we show. Yes, sir. It summarizes the whole thing happening in the computer system. Yes, sir. We have input whereby we have a keyboard and mouse. mouse. We have processing inside the system unit whereby we have a, a RAM. Uh, we have the CPU, floppy disks, hard drive. The CPU is the one communicating with all these drives, processing information. Copy information from them, take it for processing, and then write it back to them for storage. Then at the end of the day, uh, the CPU sends information to the output. You can see the output devices, monitor, printer, for uh, simple uh, basic uh, identification. Right. Now, we want to go on to uh, uh, one important computer component, the first one, which is computer case. The computer case is not the same uh, CPU. If you have a computer on the desk here, they will say it is CPU. It is not CPU. CPU is a small component inside the computer that is installed onto the motherboard. Is that not so? Yes, sir. Yes. But the computer case is that box that you see, that box, that metallic box that houses all the computer components internally. Is the, uh, uh, the computer case. So the computer case is the one that houses is the component parts that houses all the, the other parts, all the other components. Then we talk about form factor regarding the computer case. What does form factor mean? It means the physical design and look of a case. The design and look. And then we have common uh, form factors, which include the horizontal case, full size tower, compact case, all in one. Which one is all in one? Do you know? Do you know all in one? No, that computer unit, or like those are the ICT all day, that has the monitor and the everything yes. inside yes. single uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, units. Oh, there's no okay. system unit separate, there's no monitor separate. Yes, yeah. Oh, yeah. That is all in one. Are you there? Yes, sir. That is all in one. And then we have a tower. We have horizontal, horizontal case, the one that is flat that they place the system unit flat on the table and then you can put monitor on top of that. That is a horizontal case. We have tower, then we have a, uh, a mini tower and a higher one. They are different uh, form factor. One thing you must know is that this form factor of computer case must go along with the form factor of the power supply units and the motherboard. The three of them must have the same form factor. Because they are not always of the same size. So if they are not of the same form factor, you cannot install them together. You cannot install the power supply unit motherboard inside that case. So the, the, the form factor you are using, you must bear in mind when you are buying the components. To get to assemble them. Because if I place motherboard on the desk, and I can place different types of sizes. The same thing goes for power supply units. They must have the same form factor, the structure. The physical structure, the way they made it, right? And we have a certain form factor that we are going to look at very shortly for power supply now. Now, so we also explain here that uh, many case manufacturers they have their own naming convention, which includes super tower, full tower, mid tower, uh, mini tower, cube, cube case, and uh, so on. So that's what we are saying. That's what we are saying, different structure of the computer case. Now, in the case, that is where we have all the processing taking place by the CPU. Is that also? Yes, sir. Internal devices are there, installed inside in the case. A motherboard is there, obtaining CPU and other parts. The hard drive, the optical drive for permanent storage, the power supply units, power cores, supplying electricity, adapter cards, internal and external communication, 
cables to connect devices, everything inside the case. Now, adapter cards are installed installed in the expansion slots. Now, what are adapter cards? Let me quickly. Okay, we get there. Let me don't let me explain now. We still get there in the notes. But let's talk about um, optical drive. What is optical? Optical. What does it mean? Which one is optical drive? Basically, CD drive or DVD drive or Blu-ray drive. Blu-ray drive. drive. We soon get there. Let's move on because time is going. We we have a long way to go. Uh, uh, the course is a practical course. The intention is to let you learn more of the practical, less of the theory, and then be prepared for the exam. This is still in this course. Yes, wow. Okay. Wow. Now let's talk about the power supply unit. Why do we need a power supply unit in a computer? The computer system requires power supply. And the power supply is taken from the wall socket, but that power supply, ta supply taken from the wall socket is not being used directly by the computer. It's not being used directly like that. So we need a power supply unit that takes in the AC power from the socket and converts it to DC, regulates it, steps it down and regulates it. Now, the computer uh, power supply unit is having the following form factor. One is called AT, Advanced Technology. That is the original power supply for legacy computer systems. Then we have ATX, that is Advanced Technology Extended. That is the updated version of the AT. Then we have ATX12. That is the most common power supply that you can see in the market today. Then we have EPS12 volts. That is originally designed for network servers, but it's now commonly used in desktops as well. Are you there? EPS12, 12 volts. All right. Now there are different connectors and cables from the coming out from the power supply unit. These cables, they are not bringing the same voltage. There are three levels of voltages that the computer is utilizing. One is 3.3 volts. The second one is 5 volts. And the third one is 12 volts. Now, these voltages are used differently in the computer. How, do the computer, how does the computer utilize uh, these voltages? 3.3 volts and 5, 5 volts are typically used for digital circuits. They are used for what? Digital, digital circuits. And then the 12 volts is used to run motors in disk drives. 12 volts is used to run motors. Disk drives and fans. They are operated with 12 volts. So the three voltages, three level of voltages are obtained steadily from the power supply unit and connected to various parts of the computer where the power is needed. Are we there? Yes. Right. Now, the power supply can also be, can be referred to as single ray or dual ray. Uh, uh, what is the ray? The ray is just the uh, PCB, the, the electronic board inside the power supply unit. So, we call it uh, uh, ray. It is called ray. And the power supply can be either single ray, dual ray, sometimes multi ray. Right, so you can describe power supply unit of computer system like that. Also, that is a dual AC uh, power supply, a single ring power supply. Right now, let's talk about connectors. You know, power is supplied from the power supply unit to various parts of the computer, but this is connected to various parts using connectors. Is that also? So, connectors are used to power various internal components such as the motherboard, disk drives, and so on. Now, the example of connectors include 20 pin or 24 pin slotted connector. We have SATA killed connector. SATA. SATA is Syria Advanced Technology Attachment. S A T A. Syria Advanced Technology Attachment. Now, we have Molex. Keyed connector. We have bag keyed connector. We have four pin to eight pin auxiliary power connector. We have six eight pin PCIe power, power connector. connector. 
Are we there? So these are various uh, connectors we have on the computer uh, 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 power supply unit. So if you carry the power supply unit, you see that it's coming with so many connectors at the mouse. Is that also? So they have their different uh, design, like we have uh, listed here right now. Okay. Now, I want to talk about computer binary uh, system. The computer system work in binary, like what you said earlier, that computer is working with zero and one. Wow. Now, I want to tell you that in reality, the computer does not deal with numbers. It does not deal with zero and ones. So what does the computer do? We are going to explain shortly. But before then, let us agree that the computer deals with zero and one. So that we can have numbers such as 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, binary numbers. Is that also? Alright? The binary numbers, either 0 or 1, they are referred to as bits. What do I call it? Bits. 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 0 is a bit. 1 is another bit. Are you there? Are you there? Yes, sir. Okay, so when you bring a bit together, hmm, you can form different, you know, terms. If you bring four bits together, you now write in terms of four, four, four. You can have zero, zero, one, 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 zero, one, uh, one, four, oh, one, four. Oh. In four, 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 like that, you are talking about nibble. What do I call it? Nibble. nibble. Now, if you write in terms of eight, eight group of bits, you are talking of what? Bytes. Bites. Bytes. So here is nibble, and this uh, the, the, the last one is bytes. Zero zero one one four one one zero. That's one bytes. Now what happens is that data is transferred in groups, not in single single bits in the computer system. And usually you have a group of eight, for instance. So it means a byte is going at once. This group of eight going at once. All right? Now, when you look at the, 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 the computer system, the computer system uses these digits 0 and 1 to process information, counting, calculation, storage operations, and so on and so forth. Now, let's give an example how the computer utilizes these 0 and 1. For instance, look at the chart down there. Number 25 is written using 8 bits, that is a, using a byte, and it's written as 25, equal 25, it's written as 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, then 1, 0, 0, 1. This is equal 25. That is the way computer will represent it in terms of binary. But inside the computer, it does not use numbers. Are you following? Yes. You know, I'm, I'm saying this since morning. You are like, ah, they've been, they've been teaching us since nursery school that computer uses 0 and 1. Yes. Is that not so? Yes. That it is 0 and 1, 0 yes. and 1. The computer does not use 0 and 1. You are an electrical engineer. You should know what the computer is doing inside. The computer is using voltages. Mm. Hello? Voltages. So the computer represents voltage 0. Anything less than 3 volts is 0. Then voltage. It's represented as bit zero. Anything less than three volts, bit zero. Bit one is five volts. So everything that the computer does is issuing series of voltages out. That's what it does. And there are electronic modules that takes in those voltages and generate those voltages inside the computer system. If you remember your electronics during ND days, we talked about uh, uh, multivibrators. Assembly multivibrator, monosemi multivibrator, and then bisemi multivibrator. In the application of multivibrators, we make mention that multivibrators can be used as memory elements. This is where they find the application. They store voltages and they can keep the voltage for you, for you uh, uh, as required. And that is what computer uses. The computer is never dealing with numbers inside. Have you not opened a computer in your presence before? What did you see inside it? Electronic components. That voltages will be moving in and out of the Is that also? It is voltages that the computer is using. But to make man understand what the computer is doing, they represent voltage. Mm -hmm. They represent the voltages, okay, as anything 0 to 3 volts, B, 
beat zero. I present it as beat zero. Five volts. That is above three plus something to five volts. That's it. Three and above to five. Let me just say five volts. Represent it as beat one. So what the computer does is to send the voltages to various parts as required. So it will be sending like this one now. It will now send five volts, five volts, three, five. That's voltages. Everything is in volts inside. But that is represented as one, one, zero, one that we have here. Now look at the note now. We use bulb, lamp, to represent how figure 25 will be uh, 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 represented inside the computer. Did you see it using lamps? Yes, sir. One lamp is on, the other one is not on. This is on, that is not on, and so on and so forth. So we see off, 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 on, on, off, off, on. Did you remember your digital electronics when we talked to you about low, I, low, I? This is what we mean. Remember low I, low I in multivibrator that we also learned those days, they are actually voltages from 0 to 5 volts. And this is what we have here. The line that we saw now, we now have low, if you want to plot a graph of this, we now have a graph like this. Low, low, high, high, low, high, high, low. These ones are 2, these ones are 2, 2. And this one, 2, 2, 2. This only one, only this one is only one bit. This is what the, the, the computer uses inside. It's dealing with voltages. Analog voltage, to be precise. This is the analog voltage that is represented as digital value of zero and one. I think you understand now. Yes, so to make people understand, we say computer is using binary number. The computer is not using number at all. It doesn't do anything with number. It does everything with current, voltage and current. But the voltage and current is being manipulated using powerful electronic circuits. Powerful electronic circuits that can store information, keep information for you, release information for you. That's why what is happening inside the computer. System. So you as an electronic engineer must know the rudiments of what is taking place inside the computer. Even if you say it outside, this computer is using zero and one, zero and one. You know the reality that there's no number inside the computer. It's only voltage and current that is there. You will see multivibrators, you see as tables, flip flops, you see all sorts of things, transistors, integrated circuits, and so on and so forth, inside the computer module. They are using voltage and current. There is no number written inside them. I think you get the point. Yes. So the number that you want to write inside them, you send the voltage of the value. That's what the computer is using. All right? OK. And then the other one, we have a ASCII. ASCII to represent a letter A. American Standard Code for Information Interchange. That is ASCII. A S C I I. Pronounced as ASCII. Now, they have their own system of representing uh, uh, numbers and digits. The computer system represents everything sent to it with voltages. Everything. And those voltages will be 0, 1, 0, 1. At the end of the way, once you tap it, I think you get it. Now, if you are the programmer, the computer programmer that wants to program a computer, you will program in this manner. Me, I mean the real computer engineers that do programming, they program in this manner. But there is a device inside the computer, all those devices called assemblers, compilers, and stuff. They will collect this thing from outputs and re, you know, rewrite them into voltages and send it inside the computer for utilization. It is the voltages that the computer can manipulate, it is not numbers. So there's a computer that a, a, a computer part that has been built to take in everything from outside. Whether it is keyboard, whether you are pressing A, Z, hash, there's a voltage developed for it. Immediately you press it on the keyboard, it goes inside to a particular circuit and convert it to its own voltage that the computer understands and utilizes. I think you get it. So for us, A, A, that is a letter A. Represented in that uh, lamp system. That is off zero one zero 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 then zero one. This is letter A in terms of binary. And then if you use lamp, lamp does it off on off 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 on. That is it. I think you understand this now. Yes, sir. 